All right, SSL Family Dad with Simple Sustainable Living. Hey, we're out here on the, the family farm. Uh, it's our third cutting of hay. So last, uh, last cutting of the year, it's getting into September now, so uh, it won't be, won't be warm enough much longer to dry this stuff out. Uh, if you watched uh, some following videos I did with the sickle bar, I got this field cut, had some issues with it, so I've got some kind of uh, dried out, not very good hay out here that we're going to bale up and I'll put aside if for a rainy day the goats will probably eat it or something. But uh, I just wanted to take you guys along for the baling. Uh, it's a lot of fun. This is my favorite part of the whole process. A lot of people asked last time, I've got a 1969 Ford 4000 that's a gas tractor. It's about a 50 horsepower tractor. Um, independent PTO. It's a highway. It's got road gears. It's a real nice little tractor. I picked it up used uh, Craig's from Craigslist actually. Um, and I've got the 1955 Oliver Baylor. Um, the Baylor has been been great. Uh, a couple things I need to, to adjust on it. I've learned a lot over the last uh, three cuttings or you know this is my third one. Um, but uh, I'm new. I'm an amateur at this stuff. I, I did a lot of hay growing up, um, but I was mainly the helping hand. I wasn't the in charge of the equipment and all that stuff. I was just the guy that you know stacked and picked it up and put it in the barns and whatever. So uh, I've been around this stuff all my life. I've just never actually been responsible for doing it from from start to finish. So I've learned a lot, and um, hopefully I can share that with some of you new new uh, farmers out there or people uh, you know looking to do hay for the first time or whatever. Uh, share my experience. So I'm going to dig into the baler, get it all ready to go, get the tractor fired up, and we'll uh, start making some bales. All right, so let me get this taken off here. This is the cover for the nodders. So this is where all the, the action happens. This is the, the nodders. Uh, this is the only thing that I've had to, to really uh, I, I don't want to call it fix. This is really just maintenance on it, but I've had to sharpen the, the, the cutters on this. And so uh, we'll get this, these uh, two bolts taken out, and these will flip up, and we'll get in here and just use a little file and see if we can sharpen the, the cutters. So the, every time this thing ties it on, it's got to cut the twine, and uh, as these things get dull, it, it misses knots, and they hang up, and all kinds of things happen. So I want to get those sharpened up. One of my favorite tools, this thing. Big old, big old uh, adjustable wrench. Man, is this thing handy to have. There's nothing wrong with, there's nothing wrong with metric stuff. Nothing wrong with it at all. In fact, it makes a lot more sense, but man, is it nice to just have one set of wrenches. It's, it's just silly having all these different uh, different wrenches for this stuff but hard to see but there's a it's an edge right here let's see if I can see on this one better this this edge right here is the the cutters and I know this isn't the best way to sharpen these things they are they are not removable and so you only have a little bit of room to work in here I don't know if there's a this is probably the best angle I can get on it this one on this side seems to be the one that's giving me the most issues I don't I just I don't think there's a good way to get in here at this thing. Can't really sharpen it the way I should, which is just to give it a nice, good, long stroke in the same direction. for that one. All right, I think that's about as good as good as we can get him. We'll see if I made it worse or better.
All right, I think we're in business over here. A little extra grease. My, uh, my grease fitting there was, was a little loose, so we had uh, some extra squirting out. But uh, this has, I think, 12 grease fittings just in the nodder area. Um, and all that stuff, you know, it, you got to keep it greased up. I don't want that stuff to wear out. It's been running for 50 years. So um, everything else has, has a bunch of different grease fittings out here. Basically, everything that moves gets a gets a grease and uh, I, I do put a little extra grease on the chains and stuff like that I uh, you know the controversy I guess is that that attracts dust and and things but uh, I think it's okay to have a little grease on that stuff so uh, I think we're about ready to, to fire it up here uh, I got to hook up PTO the uh, the only thing I've ever had happen with this is uh, I had some hay sitting here wet and it bound up it expanded in this chamber and when that hammer comes back to hit that, it was shearing off. There's shear pins in here uh, somewhere. And uh, I think this one right here. And basically these are weak bolts. It'll, it'll just rip, you know, break this bolt right off. And then this thing will spin freely if, uh, if something gets bound in this. So it's kind of another safety. So you don't, you know, if that weren't there, it would just bend everything up and, and break stuff. Um, it also has another kind of automatic safety over here. There's a spring tensioner on this chain, and you can see here there's like these little kind of teeth that fit into each other right there. And what happens is the spring is putting tension on that to keep this thing right here spinning. And if this gets bound on something, it just overcomes the tension on that spring and it pops that over and it'll go chuk, 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 and it'll just it won't won't engage this so again you don't break your teeth and and chains and all that kind of stuff if you hit wet hay or a rock or a branch or something gets stuck in there i've had that happen uh everything on here is just made to run and, and last and uh, if something happens there's a reason for it and, and the manual even tells you just about everything that can happen with this thing so uh, very very cool cool piece of machinery so let's get it fired up and uh, make some meals hey and yes I have boots on today for all you people who commented about the flip-flops hopefully combat boots will be all right for everybody <laughs> Broken bales at the end. I just ones that came off first. Just throw those back in. Let it process them back into a new bale. behind you or look in your mirror. You're doing great. Am I going to hit the camper? Well, no. does it look like you're going to hit the camper? No. no. Okay, where am I going right now? Okay, so you're just going to go straight out to that first bale of hay. So my 11 year old is uh, Kayla, the SSL family kids is going to help us uh, help me get the rest of these bales. There's only 21 bales on this out in this field, so she drives the truck and uh, takes me around, and I'll load them up into the truck. I don't have my trailer anymore. I, it's not mine. I was borrowing it, and uh, I don't have it anymore. So uh, this is what we're what we're doing. Uh, a little bit, a little uh, slower this way, but uh, works out just fine.
Okay, go. All right, about 21 bales out of this field. And that's not too bad for third cutting. You get less and less and less each cutting. Um, I cut this one pretty short, so uh, there wasn't that much here. But this is good hay, it's all a lot of alfalfa. So I still have the field around the corner there, which is the biggest field. And the field around the corner there, which is another little field about smaller than this. So should still get another 125 bales. Uh, total here, so it's not too bad for, for our third cutting, I think. Well, we're all stacked in the barn here, so uh, it's supposed to rain tomorrow. Got everything off the field uh, that was ready to, to bale anyway. And so actually the hay turned out a little better than I had initially thought um, when I was looking at it laying in the field. Uh, once it was all raked up and baled, it turned out pretty decent. Um, some of it had some moisture still in it, and so it was pretty decent hay, I think. It wasn't completely dried to dust, so uh, the goats will love it, I think, no matter what. But uh, this will be our last last cutting of hay. I still have still have a little bit more to do out there, um, you know, some other fields to bale, but we've gotten a lot of, a lot of hay off these fields this year. Uh, our first cutting, we had about 350. Um, Second cutting, I believe, was about 150, and then this cutting will probably be about 125 uh, or so um, between all the fields, so not not too bad. We've been able to sell uh, quite a bit. We sold, um, I don't know, I guess we sold about 350 bales uh, already, and the rest of what we have here will probably keep for our goats and our pigs and uh, for us throughout the winter, so... Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, following along with the baling and the sickle bar and all that stuff. I, I just find that stuff so cool. Uh, for those of you guys who've been around it forever, I'm sure it's boring to you, but um, you know, just getting into this stuff and getting the equipment and hooking it up and doing this stuff yourself, being able to provide our own food for our animals right off the backyard has been awesome. It's such a great feeling to be able to do that. Uh, we hope to continue to utilize this land in a more sustainable way. Uh, we'd like to get all these animals completely off of any grain or any feed that we buy from anywhere else and be able to provide all their food um, from our pastures and, and things like that, growing nuts and, and, and pumpkins and all kinds of other stuff the pigs can eat. And so continuing on this whole kind of sustainable uh, path here. We have a lot of work ahead of us. As always, guys, hit that thumbs up on the video if you had fun watching us uh, do, do some hay and, and use this old baler. Um, questions, comments, throw them down below. And uh, subscribe if you want to follow along. I've got a whole another uh, uh, series of, of videos coming out that will be going through the fall and the winter. A lot of indoor stuff, a lot of DIY projects, and, and all kinds of different things we'll be doing. So please follow along for that. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one. <laughs>